Okay, I have something really good to share with you today, and this is something called a mock service worker. So have you ever wanted to mock an API response during your development? Because let's say if you work in a big company, the backend team has not delivered their API yet. So in order to get the work to continue, you don't want to wait for them to finish their API. You usually reach a contract with the backend team and you develop with mock data, right? Locally before you deal with the real data. So this will be something very, very useful for you. If you, um, even if you're a solo worker, sometimes you don't want to work on your backend API, right? You just want to mock the response while you work on the front end. So this will be a tool for almost every developer. I think it is actually the industry standard for mocking API responses in JavaScript. So I want to try this out today and show you how useful this tool is and let's get started. I use this every single day and it's been my go-to mocking service or mocking uh, tool. So let's start with a uh, Vite. Let's start with a Vite app. So I, if you don't know what Vite is, I have a video previously on that. It's a quick way to get a project started. So I'm just gonna call this project MSW and then we're gonna do a simple React application with that. So it's done. Let's go to MSW and npm install this. And then we'll install the mod service worker. So what do you have to do to, to get started? So there's a really good starter guide on the website, but let's go through it together. So we'll get the latest MSW from their website. It's, it is an NPM module, so you have to do an NPM install. And here I am going to install it and save it as a dev dependency because MSW is mostly used for devs. You try, you don't use it on a production level. So I have the package installed. So let's go to MSW here. So I have everything and double check that I have it as a dependency. Great. So now we need to create a couple of folders. So what the, the standard directory structure is in the root folder of your project, you create a folder called mocks. And this will be where all the MSW stuff is going to be in. So with MSW, you can mock two things. You can mock a response on the node server side, or you can mock a response on the browser side. So I'm going to go walk through both of them in this tutorial. And whatever you find useful for your use case, you can use uh, either of them. So let's start with a server side mocking. So I'm going to create a folder called server. And then in the base of the mocks folder, I'm just going to create a index.js file. So what do we do? In the website, you can get a example of a service mock like this. So in the, in the server folder, I'm just going to create a node server that intercepts a service, a call, right? And then um, the intercepts is call. And then when they intercept the call, it will swap out the response with uh, your response. So let me go here and uh, actually let me just create instead of a server folder, I'm just gonna create a server.js. So this server.js will handle all the server side mocking. Uh, I, I need to explain what mocking means. So when I what I mean by mock is when you make a request to the server instead of getting a response back from the server, the real server, let's say google.com, you intercept that request and replace the response with whatever you want. So as you can think, this is really, really powerful concept that all browsers or no servers is able to do with this tool. So let's save this file here. So server.js. Uh, so it's importing the setup server from MSW node. And then it's, it's looking for something called handlers.js, which is something we will do in a bit. So uh, that's done. And now let's go to a handler.js. So this is the handler.js file. So we will go to, we will create a file called uh, handlers. And then handlers, what it does is that it, so if you click on it, Right, so I need to do a little modification. I think it's, okay, we'll, we'll do it the correct way. So we'll make a folder called handlers 
and then inside of it we'll have a index.js that exports all the handlers. So what handlers are is you'll see in a second is that it's a way for you to intercept requests. So it has a couple of example here, but I like to usually give a real world example. Let's go to uh, google.com slash passwords, right? I know this doesn't exist right now, but I want to show you how this works. All this is saying is when the user creates a get request to google.com slash passwords, I want to return the following JSON to the user. Of course, I'm going to modify this a little bit, and then we're just going to return a list of uh, users, uh, then the password for the user. So uh, as you can see here, this is actually a JSON response for that request. So what this is saying, if I hit google.com slash passwords, I want this to be returned to us on the front end or the back end. So let's say John Doe, and then the password is full bar. So I'm just going to return two objects here. So we can quickly check this out to see how this works. So uh, the website also has a has a way to set up uh, this thing. So I think we did that already, which is in the server.js. Uh, so it's able to import the handlers and then set up a server. So now what we can do is we'll start a simple node server. So it has a code from here. Um, so what this does is if I go to, um, I'll create a node server. So in my root directory, I'm going to create a folder called server. So this is the server code, and then it will be index.js. So this is a very simple node server, um, except that this server is now mocked. So when I actually go to google.com and then slash passwords, if I run this script, so if I go to server and then I do a node index.js, oh, I have some, something not found. Can I find module mox node? Okay. There you go. So now it, this works, right? I, I did a, a lot of movings to make sure that um, they're referencing the files correctly. So now, okay, let's pretend I didn't do all that. You can skip that if you want. But all I'm, look what happened. Right now, if I run the node server here, all this server does is doing a fetch, right, for this on this endpoint here. And this endpoint, instead of returning the regular response for google.com slash password, which probably doesn't exist, it's now stubbing in the response from what I set up in the mock. So in my handler here, all I'm saying is if the user visits here, give this response to the user. So as you can see, I get a response when I fetch the Google endpoint. So that's how you do it on the server side. Now, if you want to do it on the client side, you can do so as well. Let's say you have a React application and you want to do a fetch on the server side, on, like on the particular API endpoint. So you can do so very easily. Uh, but first, you have to set up the client, like the browser mock. So to do that, you can do npx this command. So all this is saying, oops, I need to go to go back to my root directory. All right. So in the root directory, you do this, right? So this is saying I want to set up a mock service worker in the public folder. Public folder is everything in here is accessible by the client side application. So you do this, press save. And now all the files. So if you here, you see this new file created, right? Now this file is, uh, I wouldn't even look at it because it's for MSW, but it's a client side service worker, mock service worker that's created. So what happens next is you can actually start um, doing a bit of browser mocking. So remember what I did earlier was a server side mocking in which when I reach the endpoint via a node server, it stops the response. Now I want to do it from the client side, let's say from the React application. So we need a new file called browser.js. So this is, um, is what I call a browser side stub and 
the code here should be very similar to before, except that this is now using the setup worker from MSW browser. So if you look at the server file, it's doing MSW node. So based on different environments of your code, you had to sub in the data correctly, set up the server correctly. So now we have a browser mock set up. And what do we need to do? We need to find the entry point of your client side application. So in this V application here, I think our main entry point is this main.tsx. So we need to do a bit of a modification to, to this file in order to, to make it uh, set up correctly. So I actually pasted, I already did this. So well, what I'm changing here is I'm setting up the uh, a function called enable mocking. And this mocking is only available in the development environment because if you're not in development, we're just gonna return early. Otherwise, we're going to import the service worker, the one we just set up, right? Mock service worker uh, right here. And then we will start the worker. So this was in kick off the functionality of the mocking on the browser. And then here we have a promise, right? This function, we have a promise. And then when this is done, we will create the React application. So let's give this a try. And then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll um, let's test it out. So npm run dev. So this will start the Vit application. Let's run it and see what happens. Okay, so it's the service, the application is running. So one way we can check that MSW has started is if you go to the, the console, you see that it will say mocking enabled. So that means MSW service has successfully initialized. And now what we need to do is, remember when we initialize the browser mocking, all the handlers are imported. So that means if I try to hit this endpoint from the client side in the browser, it can now stub the response with whatever I put here. So let's test this out. Let's go to our React application here, and then um, we'll update something. We'll get rid of uh, all of this stuff here. So all I want to do is print out that list of username and password. So let's do a const uh, password set passwords use states so we'll we'll store this in a bit and then we'll do a use effect right and then uh let me oh yeah it's already automatically imported so what do we want to do we want to fetch that password from that endpoint that google endpoint we have so here's the sample code i set up and we only want to do it this once so what this is saying is when the when the application starts i want to fetch a list of passwords from this endpoint google.com passwords and then that response will set it in the states called passwords and then all we have to do is render this data out so I like to do a bit of checking. So if uh, password, is it passwords? This password exists, then let's map to, let's render them, right? The, uh, data. So this is a quick and dirty thing, but don't mind me. I'm just gonna show this for example, just put them on each, each of them on a div. And then uh, we're just gonna render them. So data dot, so what was it? You look at my handler, it's going to be data.username, data.password. So I'm just going to go data.user and then data.password. So now if I press save, this is uh, TypeScript complaining. It's okay, it's not an error. Look, I actually got the data. So if you go to the network tab, you see that it's trying to access google.com slash password. And here's the actual response from that, right? You can tell that it's mocking this with my data like whatever i tell it to respond it will respond to me you can do the same for any endpoint you want so if i want to update this you know to pentacode press save you see it's updated right away so this is in my opinion the coolest part about msw if you do application development on the client side or on the server side but you can pretty much mock any response to any endpoint you want and you can do this very, very easily once you have everything set up. Uh, you can add additional endpoints, additional like types of HTTP uh, REST requests. Um, MSW also has stubs for GraphQL as well. So if you ever do GraphQL, you can stub that response as well. 
So that's a quick introduction to MSW, and I hope you find this useful to your day to day. Let me know what you use it for, and if you have questions in the comments below. I'll see you guys next time.